Hello guys and welcome back to yet another video. We are currently outside Motomader, which is one of the biggest BMW dealers here in Switzerland. And today is a special day because inside these doors is a brand new R1250 GS Adventure HB waiting to be picked up. No time to waste, let's head in. After I've been riding the same bike for 8 seasons, it was now time for something new. And for those of you who watched my very first video I made back in February 2021, you might remember how impressed I was by the 40th anniversary edition of the R1250 GS Adventure. This model has ever since then been in the back of my mind, patiently waiting for me to come to a final decision, to let go of the past and to look ahead. So came the day when I had to say farewell to my black beast of an R1200 GS Adventure to make space for a brand new state-of-the-art travel machine. The BMW R1250 GS Adventure Rally. So, brand new bike, zero kilometers on the clock. But uh, we're still naked, no stuff. So let's go get it geared up and I'll tell you everything about how this bike is configured and all the details around it. Let's go. So why did I choose the Adventure model over the standard GS? Well, here's my top three reasons. First one, travel comfort. The GS Adventure comes with a 30 liter fuel tank, which gives me a range of about 550 to 600 kilometers. But it's also wider than the standard GS. It provides better protection from wind from my legs. The standard windscreen is also larger and these two combined will give me a much better protection from rain and cold winds compared to the standard GS. And number two, the GS Adventure is a bit taller due to its 2 cm or 0.8 inches more suspension travel compared to the standard GS. And as I'm 185 or almost 6 foot 1, the actual height of the GS Adventure simply suits me better. And the third and last reason why I choose the Adventure model over the standard GS is that it comes with both lower and upper crash bars. For me, this is crucial as I tend to drop my bike at least once a month when I'm out riding in the dirt. Also, the upper crash bars work as a perfect base to attach my accessory bags to, which we'll come to in just a minute. Okay, so let's talk about how this GSA is configured. It will start off with a color scheme. This time I chose to go with a Riley style, which means white frame, white tank and white fairing with some red and blue details. And you might wonder, why did I not choose the triple black like my previous GSA? Well, to be honest, I was getting quite bored with the black. And at the same time, this rally style, perfect to get that color contrast when I shoot photos and videos. It's always good to try new things. 
This GS Adventure has a comfort package as BMW calls it, and that includes keyless ride, heated grips and tire pressure control. The most important of these three for me personally is the grip heating, as I'm riding all year round even when it's freezing cold and sometimes even below 0 degrees Celsius, the heated grips combined with the great wind protection really helped me with staying as comfortable as possible. Something that also is gonna help now with the temperatures beginning to drop is the seat heating. And this is actually the first time I own a bike that has this feature, so I'm really looking forward to see how much of a difference it actually makes. So if the rider behind me suddenly picks up the scent of burnt bacon, I think you probably can figure out what the reason is. Very funny. <laughs> So moving on to yet another important configuration, which is the BMW Touring Package. This one includes pannier racks, cruise control and GPS preparation. Now the GPS unit itself is not included as you need to pay a whole lot extra just to have the BMW logo on a Garmin device. So I decided instead to go with a significantly cheaper yet slightly overpriced connected ride cradle. This accessory allows me to mount my iPhone to the GPS base and use it as a substitute to the actual GPS. GPS unit. And then you can argue why don't just get a regular phone mount like Quadlock or SP Connect, but here's the thing with the connected ride cradle. As my iPhone connects to it via Bluetooth, I can control the app using the multi-controller on the left side of my handlebar. And what this means is no more fiddling around with thick gloves trying to tap the small icons on the display of my smartphone. Now let's move on to the performance section, which we'll find inside the dynamic package. Here we have the Riding Modes Pro, Gearshift Assistant Pro and Dynamic ESA. Yeah, a lot of fancy names, but let's break them down one by one. So with Riding Modes Pro, you get a lot of different presets on how the bike will respond in terms of ABS, engine braking, throttle response and traction control. We have no less than seven different riding modes, which are Eco, Rain, Road, Dynamic, Dynamic Pro, Enduro and Enduro Pro. And to explain in detail how each riding mode affects the bike and your riding experience is a bit too comprehensive for this video, but let's briefly summarize them. Eco Mode made to save as much fuel as possible, where you have a dynamic indicator bar on the TFT display that helps you to get as far as possible on any given fuel quantity. Rain Mode quite self-explanatory. The throttle input is reduced, ABS and traction control kicks in early and the bike overall helps you to gain as much traction as possible in slippery conditions. Road Mode This is the default mode of the bike where you have a good throttle response for normal street riding and quick intervention by the ABS and traction control. Dynamic Mode A bit more aggressive where the throttle response is direct and the intervention from the ABS and traction control is reduced. Enduro mode, made for normal off-road riding with a smoother throttle response and later intervention from the ABS and traction control. Now the Enduro Pro and Dynamic Pro riding modes allow you to customize exactly how you want your throttle response to be as well as how quick you want the traction control and ABS to kick in. Something quite convenient is that you can also choose your favorite riding modes to be quickly accessed by just tapping the mode button on your handlebars. Now the second part of the dynamic package is the dynamic ESA or electronic suspension adjustment. This system automatically regulates the dampening and the spring preload of the suspension depending on the riding condition and how much luggage you put on the bike. You can also select the suspension to have a minimum or maximum preload if you don't want it to be automatic. And finally the shift assistant pro or as I like to call it quick shifter. For me it's an absolute must on any bike especially if you're into active riding. And what this allows you to do is to change the gears up or down without using the clutch. And not only will you have smoother accelerations as you can keep the throttle twisted during upshifting but also have seamless engine braking when downshifting, something I personally believe increases safety when you're heading down from a mountain pass. And the final package guys and it's the light package. On this 2022 GS Adventure is an adaptive LED headlight and as I lean the bike into a turn the headlight adapts accordingly so I get a better illumination of the road ahead. And included in this light package is also a set of auxiliary lights which helps me to see much better what's on the side of the road when it's getting dark. 
And there are two things I always do when I get a new bike, whether it's a one I bought or if it's a press bike, and that is to adjust the handlebars and the shift lever. As I often stand up on the pegs either to stretch my legs, rest my ass, or get more control of the bike when I'm riding off-road, I want to have a rather comfortable position on my handlebars. And usually it's enough with just loosening the bolts and tilting the handlebars slightly forward for the grips to come up a bit. And secondly, something I quite don't understand why the manufacturers do is that they put the shift lever in such a low position that it's more or less impossible to get it underneath with regular ADV boots, especially when you're standing up. So my personal preference is to have the shift lever slightly above the foot peg level to make shifting as easy as possible in all conditions. But that's enough of all the technicalities. After all, what's an ADV bike without some neat accessories and bags? Let's get it geared up. Starting off with a set of motor bags. For me, they are an absolute essential for traveling as they keep my apparel and camping gear dry and dust free no matter what the weather is like or how many times I crash or tip over. The ones I fit here are brand new and they were unboxed just moments before shooting this sequence. And as you can see, they have a perfect fit to the OEM racks of my R1250 GS Adventure. Thanks to their semi-rigid properties, they can take a real beating without starting to leak. And compared to traditional soft luggage, they are also easier to pack as they hold their ship even when they're empty. Next up is a set of mini packs. These always have a given place on the upper crash bars of any bike I ride. Thanks to the universal and adjustable attachment system, you can fit these bags more or less anywhere on your ADV bike. And just like the motor bags, the mini bags are completely dust and waterproof. To each mini bag, I like to attach a bottle holder. This way, I don't have to open and close other bags in order to access a soft drink or a water bottle. And to give everything a more personal touch, I attach a flag on each mini bag, one Swiss and one Swedish. The tall bags are a great way to expand the luggage capacity of my motor bags. In one, I usually store a foldable camping chair, and in the other, some various items I want fast access to. And a unique set of bags for the Liquid Cool GS and GS Adventure, the Cockpit Hangry Pouch Set. I use these pouches mainly for charging cables and other smaller essentials. And if the weather is not too hot, they are also perfect for storing some snack bars. For fast access to my camera, spare riding gloves and mountain pass toll cards, the new Ranger tank bag has a given place on my new bike. It attaches with a universal strap system and is 100% waterproof without an additional rain cover. And to complete my luggage setup, the highly modular Overlander bag will expand my luggage capacity by 48 liters. I often use the 30 liter version for day trips, but for long trips, it's always good to have a bit of extra storage available. Let's move on to the hardware, starting with the side stand foot extension. This piece of equipment is crucial when I park my bike anywhere where the ground is a bit softer. Without it, the risk of the bike tipping over is much bigger, so this is something I always make sure to fit as early on as possible. And to increase the comfort both on and off the road, I install a set of motor pegs. Besides being larger than the OEM foot pegs, they also have a progressive rotation dampening, which I can customize by changing the internal rubber pins. And to save the soles of my boots, the rubber insert can be installed and removed in just a few seconds. And 
And what would that GS Adventure be without one of the most popular headlight guards on the market? Dual protection, enhanced iconic look and highly modular. The Headlight Guard X is a given accessory to install on any new R1250 GS. And that's it! My new BMW R1250 GS Adventure is ready for whatever is ahead during the coming months. If you like this video and would like to see more of this content in the future, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Ride safe!